we keep pushing the envelope with our Galaxy product and the latest is now 1 megahertz, true 1 megahertz on the ground uh, points uh, which enables the Galaxy now to be the most efficient sensor especially if you have changes in terrain because basically it treats all the terrains including mountainous terrains as if it was flat. It maintains a constant swath width, maintains a constant point density, so it makes it very easy for operators to, to operate at high density uh, with a sensor that can basically simplify greatly their operation and reduce greatly also the number of lines flown. So our focus is really in, in two areas. One is to be more and more productive, or rather to help our customers be more and more productive, because really uh, that's, that's what it's all about. There's a lot of competition on price out there, and so if, if I can reduce my operator's costs, it makes a big difference for me. It helps our customers maintain their margins even when prices are being very tight and very challenged. Uh, so that's an area of focus, of course, all the while making sure that our quality remains at the top level where our customers expect it to be. So the cleanest data out there in the market space and the most efficient sensors as well. So that's been one continued area of focus for us and we'll continue to, uh, to work in that area in the years to come as well. But another area of focus as well has been, Optic traditionally has been really focused on high-end, high-performance sensors and we have neglected over the years the mid-market uh, area. And, and frankly, that was a mistake on our part because that's an area that's growing a lot. It's growing faster than the high-end, obviously. I mean, the pyramid is wider at the bottom. So what we've done is we've taken our, our high-end technology and pushed it down into mid-market prices. So for example, the Polaris that we now have, last year we announced it, now we're actually selling it, we're shipping it. It's really high-end quality, high-end performance, but at mid-market prices. Prices that compete even the phase modulation uh, scanners that are typically at the low end of the market. So we believe that it's, it's really a very exciting, very compelling product uh, that, that basically fills a, a gap that existed in the marketplace. The latest trends, obviously, I mean, you know that uh, there are new disruptive technology that have appeared over the last couple of years, Geiger mode, single photon, and those are technologies that are really raising the bar in terms of efficiency. But at the same time, they come with some serious challenges in terms of the, the cleanliness of the data. There's a lot of noise that's inherent to the technologies. So while the efficiency is stepping up in a big way, the, the data becomes very difficult to work with as well. There's a lot of manual editing that has to be done. The processing is very proprietary. So these technologies cannot be rolled out. And frankly, the price of these sensors is much, much higher than, than the traditional linear LiDAR sensors. So these technologies are very interesting and they clearly need to be watched. But at the same time, for people who are in business today, there's still a gap that, that cannot be bridged at this time. And so our focus is to, to keep pushing the envelope in the linear sensors to get them as close as possible to the, to the efficiency of these new disruptive technologies, all the while maintaining a high signal to noise ratio so that the data remains very clean, easy to work with, minimal uh, editing to be done, and frankly for us to be doing all the cleaning so that our customers can process and very quickly deliver their data without being bothered with all this technological, uh, all these issues around cleaning data that are very time consuming, very labor intensive today. We've been working with several companies in that space. Uh, it's, it's something that I had talked about last year already, and that is uh, it, for a, an autonomous vehicle to be completely independent, it requires a lot of sensor power. It's very high cost. It's not easy to integrate in small, compact uh, uh, modules. So it's really not a good way to go. Certainly, I mean, it's been tried, but it doesn't work in the consumer market when you want to scale it. It just doesn't scale. So the alternative is to build enough knowledge about the environment inside the autonomous vehicle and to use basically low cost, compact sensors to manage just the change. Basically what's dynamic, pedestrians, vehicles, bicycles, things that, that wouldn't be static, that wouldn't be captured in a base map. So where we play is obviously looking at how we can contribute as well. We have over 40 years, I mean 40, almost 45 years now of LiDAR experience. We're the oldest LiDAR commercial shop in, uh, in the world. So we're working on how we, we help the automotive industry design the right, the right priced, right sized sensors for them. But we're also working with companies 
that are very active to create high accuracy base maps that can be preloaded in these vehicles so that they have a, a pre-existing knowledge of the space around them. While scanning and, and LiDAR scanning in particular is playing a growing role. I hear a lot of customers who talk who are very active in photogrammetry and who are saying the market has really moved in a big way towards LiDAR. That's where the growth seems to be and really it's because um, the photogrammetry is, is great in terms of planimetric resolution. You can't beat it. LiDAR can't touch it, clearly. The resolution of these cameras is so high, but when you need an elevation model, that's where the issues arise. Especially in cities where you have a lot of shadowing between buildings, it becomes very challenging for cameras. So LiDAR is growing in that space, and it's not an, uh, an either or, it's both uh, solutions together. So for smart cities, absolutely, whether it's mobile solutions on the ground, that scan in a true 3D space or from the air in what we call 2.5D, uh, LiDAR is playing an increasingly large role. If you look on the airborne side, we are seeing these new disruptive technologies basically that, that try to push the, the efficiency very high. Uh, quite frankly, there's opportunities for technology in between as well that doesn't have all the challenges of, of the Geiger mode, for example, in terms of noise or single photon, but that still is a big step up in terms of efficiency compared to today's technology. So that's an area that is really worthwhile exploring in the near to midterm. Otherwise, also, you're looking at scanning, uh, how to scan more efficiently, so not just having more points and, and large areas, but also how do we have more clever scan patterns that are really suitable for specific applications. Uh, for example, in the case of, again, Galaxy, the, our SWATH track feature enables our customers to scan in mountains, even with 2,000 meters of, of vertical drop, as if it was flat. So it's these clever ways to apply technology that are helping our customers today and tomorrow get more efficient while we keep working on these other disruptive technologies to make them just more user friendly. We're now working well outside of LiDAR. Even though Optech is, is truly a LiDAR company, we're part of a, a very rich technology group uh, that offers very different sensors as well. I mean, augmented reality, if that's what you're referring to, is really a, a booming market. And LiDAR is, is a core piece of that. So we're starting to see it because we see our, our end products, map products, for example, being used, especially in the mobile space, where people are using, for example, for utilities. Uh, they want to know what are the assets that I care about and how do I identify those assets? How do I capture the specific attributes of those assets? So LiDAR is, is a great technology to enable augmented reality. There's no doubt about it.